I'm in the Foley Electric 2024 Genesis G80. A few years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I reviewed this vehicle and at the time it was my favorite electric vehicle I've ever driven. Does that still rain today after I've driven countless other electric cars? Today we'll find out. <laughs> Since the last time I reviewed the Genesis G80 electric, really nothing's changed. I mean, in fact, I'm in like a carbon copy of the same model. So I'm not even going to reshoot B-roll exterior and interior. It's effectively the same car, just one model near one model year newer. The exterior doesn't need to change. I love the G80 standard, whether it's a two and a half liter, three and a half liter turbocharged engines. Um, the, the look here is almost identical. The grill has more, well, the grill is completely like a shield. It doesn't allow any air to get through unlike the turbocharged models. Um, and the rear might be a little bit different since it doesn't have exhaust tips and the wheels are unique to this model. So honestly, it looks really good in any trim level and the G80 here, fully electric, really, it's hard to tell it's an electric car to be honest. And I think that is one of the strongest points here. It doesn't look crazy. It doesn't look like a spaceship. It doesn't look like the GV60, which is definitely an eye-catching car. This exudes class and luxury, just like its gasoline counterparts. And it's kind of like that subdued, regal look that looks amazing. Also kind of like the, the upscale Genesis G90. I wish this powertrain was in that G90. Speaking of powertrain, Nothing has changed. Still, you have like the 87.2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. It's good for about 290 miles on the highway. That's the EPA estimate. In my testing with my type of driving, I'm getting way better than that. If you need to go through a red light, oh my, well, it was yellow, it was yellow. There's no delay. This is one of the most satisfying powertrains. The Genesis GV70 electric also has uh, a very similar powertrain to this. This has 365 horsepower and over 500 pound-feet of torque. The Genesis GV70 has a little bit more power. I think it's around 400 horsepower and it is that vehicle is a little bit faster, zero to 60. This one will do in the mid to low fours. Um, I don't feel like it needs to be any faster. The Genesis GV70 electric actually goes faster, zero to 60. I got like 3.8 seconds. It's one of the fastest vehicles I've ever tested here on the channel. It would be nice that if, if Genesis could have updated this sort of powertrain to match the GV70s, but it's completely unnecessary. It's just kind of like a siblings rivalry at that point. Who's the fastest one? Because foot, put, foot down, silent rocket ship propulsion. It's so smooth, so satisfying. And that's just a normal mode. If I'm in sport mode, it's even more aggressive. You know, here in normal mode, when you put the foot down, it doesn't just smack your head against the headrest, which it can, it chooses not to. It's more of a smoothed out uh, application of that torque and power. Um, and if I go ahead and put it into the yeah, drive modes right here and go ahead and put it in that sport mode, the bolsters get tighter, love that. And then, oh my gosh, that's the neck snapping. I need to move up this headrest because the headrest wasn't there to support my head. Oh my gosh. So there's, it has completely different character within the driving modes, which I really appreciate. Eco, it won't give you the full fat torque or horsepower, but Eco, oh, it's really pleasant to drive in. The, the pedals dole down, and so you can drive this thing like, a, like, I would say like a Bentley. It is so smooth, so quiet in here. The only time I'm annoyed by any noise in here is if you're below like 21 miles an hour, uh, you know, the manufacturers are required to put in a synthetic noise uh, to alert pedestrians. It is quite eerie in here. It is loud and it disrupts what an other, would be an otherwise completely silent experience. But it, once you get about 21 miles an hour, the faster you go, the quieter it gets, which doesn't, it shouldn't happen, but that's just the, the way it is with that synthetic noise. You also have different levels of recharge in here. Um, it does iPedal, so it'll do full one pedal driving. There it goes. If I, you almost have to hold it down, but um, yeah, one pedal driving, it's one of the best out there. It's up there with Volvo and Polestar's one pedal driving. Um, I just, you know, I'm an old schooler. Yes, I can get good at it, but every once in a while, you just take your foot off the pedal and you want to coast. And if you forget you have iPedal on, it slams on the brake. So I just like uh, putting it in like one or zero region and let this be more like a traditional luxury car where you don't have to worry about regen going on. 
Um, but if I was in stop and go traffic, of course I would use that iPedal drive uh, to have, not have to exhaust my right foot going to the brake pedal to the gas pedal. So I haven't talked about the interior here. Um, nothing's changed. It, well, yeah, the, GV, the G80 electric only comes in one trim level in America, and that's the Prestige trim, which is $80,000. So for 80 grand, you're getting a lot in this. Um, we have a fully digital cluster behind the steering wheel. Um, and we also have this huge 14 inch screen here. I love the wide widescreen aspect of it. It keeps my eyes close to the road. I also have a head up display, heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel. These seats, like I said, with adjustable bolstering, adjustive thigh extension, like I couldn't be happier. There is no panel roof in here. Instead, I'm treated with world class suede all the way around the roof, which is, is great. Would I like to pan roof? Of course, however, since this is a modified gasoline platform, the battery, I'm sitting on top of the battery. And so my head comes really close to the roof line, which also reduces my visibility. I would say it's, you know, I'm six foot one, so I'm on the taller end compared to most people. If you're any taller than me, you might not, you might not like it. Now, plenty of leg room. I have a short torso, so that's why I can kind of cram in here, not have that too big of an issue. But for a luxury car, I'd like a little bit more airiness, a little bit more visibility. Um, and these windows do feel pretty small for such a large vehicle. It is kind of like the Crown. I just reviewed the Toyota Crown recently. Um, and once you're up to speed, uh, this is very similar to the Crown, but this costs about $30,000 more than the Crown. Um, so ride quality is similar to the Crown. Uh, quietness is similar to the Crown. Uh, this is way, 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 way faster than the Crown um, and smoother. Even though I don't, actually, I don't know, I'm, even though the Crown has a turbo four cylinder, that powertrain is almost on par with this and how it's applied in that Crown. So, man, I mean, the Genesis G80 is still one of the best electric vehicles I've driven from the exterior, interior, like the interior design here, the interior quality materials blows that Crown out of the water. Is it $30,000 better? <sighs> That's up to you to decide. I mean, there's nothing in here that drives me crazy other than the reduced headroom. Um, and that, even that I kind of am getting used to. And that's just a great instant torque and power. So I can get around and merge into lanes like this, like it handles so well. That's something too, that I think this actually might handle a little bit better than the Crown. Um, that squirrel better keep running. But uh, yeah, the steering in here has a nice heft to it. Something that I wasn't expecting typically in luxury cars like this they have a more soft, easy going steering. That's not the case here in this G80 electric. It is on the sportier end when it comes to the steering, it handles well, and it's on the luxury end when it comes to ride quality. It's not firm, not bumpy. It's just super, super buttery all the time. Get into that brake pedal. It's pretty light. I wish it was a little bit meatier feeling, but um, yeah, there's a little bit of dive there at the end, a little bit of wobble, which, it's really hard for manufacturers to get rid of it seems like in electric cars when you get to the last little bit because not only are you dealing with mechanical brakes you're dealing with the regen braking system um i feel like volvo and polestar do a better job so i get around easily get around like oh, it's just so satisfying to have all that instant power and torque and when when you apply it if there's it doesn't teeter back that's something i feel like the gv70 did because it's so, the, high, the center of gravity is so much higher in that um here it, it just feels a lot more ironed out with the power delivery but yeah with that brake pedal it, you do get a little pitch and dive kind of like the nissan aria when you get to the last little a uh, couple miles per hour to the stop um, like i said volvo and polestar have that down pretty well they have that software baked in where it kind of smooths it out and i think toyota's g sorry, uh, RZ450E and the, the BZ4X do a really good job of bringing the vehicle smoothly to a stop. But that's just a small, small thing that I could get. Oh, there's a G70, G70, yeah, G70 sedan, which maybe has another year before it's canceled, unfortunately. They'll bring, they probably bring out a fully electric G70. Speaking of which, you know, Genesis wants to be fully electric. I think with new models by 2025 and then fully electric throughout the lineup by 2030. So, all right, well, I still adore this vehicle. Is it still my favorite electric car? Uh, about a year and a half later or so after reviewing it the first time? Well, maybe. Um, you know, there's more competition on the road. Would I take a GV70 electric over this? No. 
I wouldn't, even though the GV70 is cheaper than this. I would spend a little bit more money. I just like uh, the presence of this vehicle, I like the sedan of it. It's quieter, uh, it's smoother, even though, though it's not quite as fast, it's definitely a smoother vehicle. And the interior in here, I love this kind of marble texture. I mean, I'm just so, so, so happy in here. And I think it's still, it's still probably top three electric cars I've ever driven. It's just so expensive. And uh, when you consider you can get the same sort of looks and interior, not the exact same looks and interior, but very, very similar on the twin turbo V6, as well as the turbo four cylinder Genesis G80. But if you want that extreme luxury, extreme quiet and smoothness that only electrified powertrain can provide, the G80 is really hard to beat. And I would absolutely pick it over a Tesla Model S. There's no way a Model S can come close to this in build quality, like the gaps on this and the panel alignment's near perfect. Um, and the interior in here is super high luxury, um, even for $80,000. It just feels and exudes premium and luxury. And I never ever want to get rid of the G80. And unfortunately, I've only had a day to drive it because I was in Japan for the entire week and it gets picked up and switched out tomorrow. Uh, so I am gonna miss it. I don't want it to go. I feel like this would be an amazing daily driver. And if you need to take it on road trips, big deal. It's got 800 volt charging capacity uh, and it charges super fast, like 10 to 80% around 20 minutes. So like one of the absolute best electric cars out there. And for the price, yes, it is expensive, but what's its competition? Its competition is really expensive, if not more expensive too, uh, and cannot provide an interior like this either so anyways genesis you're on the right track here um just come out with more trim levels for this so it's a little bit more affordable i would say to get your your uh your feet wet into this delicious g80 electric thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed this short little review uh smash the like button can't wait to test more genesis products in the near future they just came out with a, a coupe crossover of their gv80 um, and that comes with the twin turbo v6 supercharged as well. So it's kind of a mild hybrid that we see in the G90. That thing would be a lot of fun to drive. Can't wait to test that when it's available in my market. And thank you guys. Take care of yourselves and peace.